Hey Sun, stay sun. I'm Daisy Victoria and welcome to another video. And here's a butterscotch. She's going to help. Today we are going to be looking into my process to make a very special cosplay outfit for a very special friend of mine, Estelle. Estelle is a lifelong best friend and an honorary sister. Now this costume is from the show Good Omens, which if you haven't watched it, it is so good. I'd highly recommend. So anyway, Estelle is going to cosplay as Crowley in his role as Bildad the Shuite from season two. Seeing as how this is based on a biblical character, this is a very ancient style costume, which as you guys might have noticed, has been my thing recently to do more ancient style outfits. So to do this costume, there are a few pieces that I'm going to need to put together. So first of all, Crowley wears an under tunic, which is plain black. This is sort of your basic ancient style tunic with a keyhole neckline. He also wears a robe that is a very kind of basic ancient cut where it's like a big rectangle that's cut open in the front. And this is going to be the least seems the easiest part of the outfit. He also has a headband and a belt that we will be making. Now this is very cool to share with you guys because Estelle is a very different size and proportion than me. And while I used to do a lot of commissions, when I switched over to doing more content, I wasn't taking as many commissions anymore and I've dwindled that down. So it's for me been either commissions or content and not both. So you end up getting a lot of things that are around my size in the content. Not always, sometimes there's something different, but this time it's one of those cases. It's something very different size and proportion. So what I did to get started on this was I made a list of measurements for Estelle to take for me since I'm not there physically with her. And then I used those measurements to draft up my patterning plan, which is right here. I'm doing this tunic in a very basic way. So this is your standard T tunic style. It's like a T. So we I we just cut across here, arms and doo -doo -doo, and kind of flare it at the bottom. So standard T tunic. This one is not all the rectangles and stuff as the other ones that I've done for me that you just saw in the recent video. Um, this one is more akin to some of the more curved seam things that I've done, and it's also the simplest form of a T tunic that you can probably make. This particular iteration is going to have some extra seams based on the fabric size in relation to the proportions. So my fabric is 26 inches wide. Well, actually, that's half of it. Okay, so my fabric is 54 inches wide. And while I can cut this a different, less efficient way, I would like to use this part down the center as half of my fabric. So one side of the fabric is the front and one side is the back, if that makes sense. So that means I have 26 inches to work with here. Well, based on the bust measurement plus a little bit of ease, I've determined that I want this measurement to be 32 inches for a total of 64 minus seam allowance, so just over 60. And that is not really supported by the fabric width. So to compensate for that, what I'm gonna do is instead of how I made that last one where that was the edge and I added the sleeves, I'm actually adding this entire piece over here. So remember last time how I told you sometimes the medieval garments are made with very different sort of cutting layouts that are not the same as the gores I did in mine? This is an example of one of those. So now in medieval finds and ancient finds you'll see often a lot more pieces, like piecework in here, because you're really trying to use all the fabric you can and not waste anything. So I'm not as concerned with not wasting all my tiny pieces. Obviously I want to be as economical as I can, but that's balanced with my time and blah blah blah. You know, there's a whole thing. So this is very similar also in the spirit of all those ancient tunics. So what I'm going to do here is this is one piece here and then this is a piece here right that piece on the side now i decided to make a third piece 
you know, if this is half, it's like one, two, three, third piece as the bottom of the sleeve because that was more economical for my fabric than cutting this whole piece like that. So it's kind of however it lays out on your fabric. So in this particular pattern, we have a 64 inch length. We have 37 total across one side, neck to end of the sleeve. We have 32 across the bust. Also we have seven at the end there for the arm. And that gives us these five pieces. So there's two here on each side and one in the center. And then the back also has those five pieces. So I've gone ahead and cut this out and started sewing a couple pieces together and I'm going to show you what it's looking like. Right, so here is the front piece along with the back. So I sewed those together at the shoulder seams. You can cut this as one continuous piece depending on your fabric layout, but I cut it from one width of the fabric. Um, I also cut a keyhole in the neckline just like what I did for my last tunic that you guys just recently saw. And then this is that side piece. So it's coming up here and going out there into the sleeve. And here is where I've attached that end sleeve piece. Now I went ahead and did not have a seam here on my sleeve piece, so I'll show you what that looks like. So here is the front and the back, shoulder seam, or extension of the shoulder seam, and then that sleeve piece is sewn on there. Just like on my last tunic dress, I am going to finish off the neckline before I finish off the tunic because it's easier that way. I'm also going to go ahead and do this before I even attach those side pieces onto the front and back of the tunic. Reason being, I want to do the neckline with as little fabric to finagle as possible. I'd also like to mention here that this is cool because in that last tunic video I mentioned how I had turned the facing to the front side of the fabric and I had mentioned how you can also turn it to the inside so it's actually an inner facing and that is what I'm going to do here. It's going to be an inner rather than an outer facing. So here we've now sewn this on. You can see I've sewn it down so that this hemmed edge that I stitched down is on the wrong side, which means that on the right side you don't actually see the facing. There's just that stitch line around where it is. So here's the front. You can see the stitch line. And that facing comes all the way down and around here. And then on the inside, you can actually see where I folded it over. So, it's the inside or invisible facing version of what I did last time. All right, so next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these side pieces, so that sleeve and extension of the side there, and we're going to sew these onto both sides of the tunic and that will extend it to its full size. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, this piece is sewn on, and we now have that T-tunic shape. So the next step for me to do is to sew the side seams from this opening all the way down to the bottom hem. I'm gonna do that on both sides, and then I'm going to hem the sleeves and the lower edge of the tunic by folding under twice. Aha! Done! We've hemmed sleeves and a hemmed lower edge. That means that I can take a break for now because it's bedtime or time to get ready for bed 
and I can work on the next layer tomorrow. As a note on the under tunic, the reason I chose linen is because it is a historically accurate material and it's nice and cool and my friend is going to be wearing this in Atlanta on Labor Day weekend. So we want to keep her as much from overheating as possible even though she's gonna be wearing a big black outfit. Don't worry there's air conditioning, we'll be okay. So anyways, linen, good choice for the under tunic. The outer tunic or the abaya has a little bit different fabric choices. So this is the main fabric for the abaya. This is a corduroy with a very large whale or rib size and it has a little bit of an alternating rib so like every other one looks slightly different and that mimics the texture of Bildad's slash Crowley's abaya in the show. His has a very unique texture and I wasn't able to find the exact one. Estelle and I looked at many different fabrics and we kind of weighed which ones we liked and what we liked better and this one because one it's cotton so that's going to be a little better for the heat than a poly fabric and also we both agreed that this kind of corduroy whale really gave the effect of Crowley's abaya. Now this fabric is a really cool stripe that I found. It's similar to Crowley's stripes. It's not exact, I couldn't find an exact one, but this is by far the closest. Stop making noise. I like how it's got different um, I like how it's got some variation in the stripes and it allows me to select which ones I think are the best so I can cut as I see fit. This fabric is not all cotton but it's okay because we're only going to use small pieces of it along with the cotton corduroy. So this is going to go on the abaya as stripes. It's also going to become the head wrap. Alright, so that takes us through the making of the tunic. One last thing, because Bildad does have some ties on his tunic, I went ahead and attached two sets of ties to the front, to that keyhole neckline, and the tunic is complete. So I will show you what I did for the rest of the costume. First of all, a really simple part is the headband. So this is just a piece of that striped red fabric folded in half and stitched down. So then you just wear it kind of like that. The outer robe is exactly the same as the abayas that I make for my ancient Egyptian costuming. It's really kind of a standard garment for that part of the world in that time period. The difference is that it's got this stripe here. So I cut the stripe off of that striped red fabric, which was as close of a stripe as I could find to what Bildad is wearing in Good Omens. And I think we got pretty close. The reason I chose the corduroy is because that was about the closest I could get to what Bildad wears as well. His has a little more patterning on it, but in general this large size whale corduroy was a pretty fair approximation. So the abaya is a big rectangle. So here's one half and here's the other half. So like this. And what I did was I pieced those red stripes on. So it's one big over, you know, front to back piece that is just stitched underneath the arms. So I have an armhole and then it's oh, it's uh, stitched below that and open there for the arm to come out. So in case you didn't see the other ones, when you wear it, it just goes like that. And that is it. Now this one is gonna be way too big for me because it is not my size, and that is okay, but just to give you an idea, doo -doo, and that's that. So for this one, I 
did the style where I just simply like it should just cut right up there so it's like a V behind the neck you can kind of see that um, and so that's that there is one more piece of this costume and that is the belt for the belt I made a very long piece of black linen this is folded over and hemmed so just a big sash the turquoise triangles on the belt are made of felt so what I did was I got a couple of the 9 by 12 felt squares from the craft store and I just kind of eyeballed it to get the shape that Bildad has on his belt and then what I did was I took the first row and I just repeated that as the pattern onto the other rows sewed them all together and then to apply that onto the belt or the sash I noticed that Bildad has some red on his so I used a red thread to just stitch that down along the top and the bottom. Now guys I'm pretty excited about this Bildad costume. I think it's really cool and I think my friend's gonna look amazing. She's already been gathering all the accessories like the glasses and the wig and I just can't wait to see it all together. So we are going to look at this on the mannequin and when we come back I'm gonna show you how this looks on Estelle at Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> 